What is up guys, Zach aka Infected Brooks is bringing you a tutorial for VS3 GFX. Um, today we're going to be doing um, a simple intro. Uh, this is going to be, <coughs> sorry, this is going to be split up into a few parts. Uh, part 1 and part 2. Um, so let's get started because it's going to take a while. So first off what we're going to do is just start up Cinema 4D. Got it already open just to save some time. And what we're going to do first off is we're going to change the output okay and we're going to go to film and video the I am using Cinema 4D R11.5 I do recommend you get R11.5 okay and we're going to click all frames and we're going to have it 1920 by 1920 by 1080 and the resolution at 72 and our save we're going to just leave that for now that'll be part 2 okay so we've got our now a widescreen view now what we're going to do if we're going to have text, okay? I'm just going to put example, okay? Like so. I'm going to choose a font. This, this is all you can do by yourself. It's pretty simple. If you know anything about this, you should know how to do this bit. Right. So now we've got example, okay? We're going to change it. I'm going to change the depth to AA, okay? So now we've got some thick text, okay? And I'm just going to adjust the camera angle. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so there's the example, yeah, as you can see. Now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer once, okay? And now what we're going to do is put some caps on both, like so. Okay, now we're going to change the object, we're going to change the depth to 20, right? So it's a nice thin layer with caps on, okay? I'm going to move this to the middle, right? So now we've got two forms of text, one in front of the other, right? We're going to group these by clicking Alt and G. Okay? So now we've got this and it's one full text object, yeah? Today we're going to be doing sim simple keyframing. Um, it's it's dead, dead easy. Um, so, um, all we're going to do is have this text come flying in uh, and then have a back to it as well. But we'll get cracking on. Right. So, next, what we're going to do is we're going to make a cube. Okay? Now, with this cube, you're going to stretch it out and then we're going to go into a different view clicking this button click this button and then we're going to stretch it thin and then we're going to go put it behind the text using this view and across and then we're going to go like that and then up so we're in the middle okay use other views if you use other views it's going to help you loads okay so there we go so we've got a back and the text okay so all I'm going to have today is it spinning um, and flying. That's this, that's all today. I'm not going to have different ones coming in at different points. So next thing I think sh should we should do is bring some lights in. Okay, I highly recommend you go buy um, Gorilla Light Scale Pro, Light Kit Pro. Okay, Google that. Okay. In fact, do you know what? I'll leave I'll leave a description a link in the description below. I recommend you buy it. It's the, it will be one of the best things you could buy for your um, Cinema 4D. Okay, so what we're going to use in the HDRI in the Grill Scale Light Kit Pro is the HDR Sky and the Overhead Softbox. Okay, so just these two for now. And we're going to make this Overhead Softbox. We're going to have the overall scale at 150. Right, well, 151 will do. And we're going to move it forward, okay? Just so the edge is at the tip of the text you see right so we'll just quickly render that as you can see there's some nice shadows and now what we're going to do with the HDR sky is we're going to put a HDR eye image okay which is HDR uh, HDR file okay I have loads there is some that you, when you come when you buy it and there is some that you can buy it on the website so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my own if wherever you've saved them you need to go what you need to do is click these three dots go to wherever you've saved them okay and then just choose one. I, Prodigy HD, uh, I'll leave a dis link in the description below. He's brought out a graphics pack that has Studio 1 to 15 in it, okay? Today I'm going to use 15, okay? Which has a window type um, reflection type thing on it. I, I don't know what to call it, but it's got like a, a, a window thing, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this overhead shadow softbox, okay? We're going to go into the different view, okay? And now what we're going to do is make it come down just underneath it, yeah? So we've got 
light on top and light underneath. Just spin that around. Like so. Right. Now if we render this, okay, you can see this is an example with the two shadows, okay? So what I think we should do next is put some materials on here. I'm gonna make my own. You can even there's some good ones in the shader, okay? So what we're gonna do, click file, shader, Danel, and it will come up with this red one. This one's really nice. I'm gonna put it on if what we're gonna do is open up the null object. I'll quickly just group these together. You don't have to do this. But I like to keep everything nice and organized, okay? So on the text object, we're going to put the red, okay? So that's the front. And then on the back, we're going to put a black. So we'll just make our material dead easy. And then we're going to put a black, okay? So like so. As you can see, it's a very nice effect. Um, this this color is really cool, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to load my materials, okay? I'm going to leave a link in the description below. As you can see, there's loads. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a Chrome, okay? And we're going to make this have caps. Just these caps, yeah? So what you're going to do, <coughs> excuse me, go into caps, start, and fill it, fill it, whatever you want to call it, cap, okay? It's five, so now it's covered up the black. So we're going to scale it down to about two, okay? We don't want a huge one okay and we're going to drag and drop onto the red uh, text object so we've got so now as you can see it's all chrome so now what we're going to do in the selection here it's going to click shift r one okay as you can see now we've got an, a, a chrome edge which adds some really cool um reflections to it uh, also looks pretty cool if i'm going to be honest right next thing we're going to do the cube at the back the backing plate. I'm not sure what to call it. There's many different names. So, what I'm going to do is use a uh, good material, good material, good material. A grey, okay? We're going to use this one here. We're going to just tone it down a little bit. There we go. So, now we're going to drop and drag into the cube, okay? So, now we quickly render that out. As you can see, looks pretty cool. But what we're going to do now to this cube. Okay, is going to fill it. it. Okay, so now it's put an edge on it, but that's too big. So what we're going to do is we're going to do scale down the radius like so. Yeah, and the more the more uh, subdivisions you do, the more round rounder if that's a word it's going to be. As you see now, that's a, a really cool look. Okay. Alright, now we're going to do some keyframing. I'm going to zoom out, because you zoom out to where you want the end product to be, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on this timeline bar at the bottom. So now what we're going to do is 150, okay, in this box here. So now that's made 150 frames, as you can see. This is going to be a short intro. It's not going to make super long. Uh, it might be longer than 150 frames. I'm not going to say short yet. So next what we're going to do is where we want it to end up at the end, we're going to keyframe. So I'll click key oh, hang on. Make sure you've got the null object, okay? Because we've put these two together, so if I if you watch, if I separate these, it won't look right. Okay? So what we're gonna do is null object together like so. And we're gonna just quickly minimize that. There we go. And click keyframe and the cube click a keyframe. Alright, so now all I'm gonna do is have it come in from behind the camera. So if I click that, so if I pull it back and then keyframe it, okay, using this button here, that's the keyframe button, and then play that, as you can see, it comes straight in from the camera, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to rotate, okay? So rotate 60 degrees roughly, and then keyframe that again, okay? As you can see, it's added a bit more depth to it, okay? I'm going to copy this keyframe here, so I'm going to right click, copy, move this keyframe along, and copy, paste it, uh, 70, okay, just move that along, there you go, so now what we're going to do, if you watch, play it through, there's like a bounce to it, if you see that, yeah, that bounce is a really cool effect, um, it's not, I don't think it's intentional to be like, it's more realistic. I don't know what it is. It just looks better, right? So now we're going to move the cube, okay? So we're going to move the cube 
down and have it coming behind. So about there. Okay, so keyframe that. So then that's coming on. Right, and now rotate this one as well. Uh, about 33 degrees. Okay, click OK. And we're going to move it back. Okay, so we're going to blue one, then the green one to move it back. Okay, and keyframe that. Right. So as you can see, we've got it coming in and then hitting the back. Okay. What I th what we're going to do from there is we're going to collect these two objects. I'm going to click Alt G. So now it's a group object, and I recommend you do this because if you don't, it can mess up sometimes and it looks really weird. So I'm just going to call this an ex example. Okay. Like so. Now what we're going to do with this is we're now going to keyframe it at 90, no, 86 frames. Okay, so keyframe that, then go to about 120, get the rotation tool, and we're going to rotate it completely around like that. So it's on its back, like so. Now keyframe that. Okay, so now if you can see, when it hits, it kind of makes it spin around. Imagine like you hit something and it would carry on going. Um, Newton's third law, or fifth, I'm not sure. I don't care. Anyway, so what we're going to do is have it, and then maybe not coming back. We'll tr try something different. So we'll just delete that keyframe. Right, so we're going to have it spin all the way around. So what we're going to do is go, go to about 140 frames, and then we're going to carry on it spinning. Okay? So now what we're going to do, oh, don't worry about that. My camera's just turned off. Sorry about that. I was going to do my keyboard, but camera turned off for some reason. Obviously, it doesn't like me recording. Anyway, so we position it to where you want it to end up, right? I want it to end up there. And then we're going to keyframe that, as you can see. So it spins all the way around. So we'll play it from the beginning. There we go. And then it'll spin. And if you really want to, we can speed this up by highlighting, by dragging on it, like that. And then bringing this one and just moving it closer. There we go. Then move it back up. There we go. So let's have a look now. Right, that's a bit too quick at the end, so we'll just move it along. There we go. <coughs> right, we'll just have a quick render there to see what that looks like there. Some nice reflections going on. Okay. So it spins all the way around like so. Right, that's where it ends up. Okay. Right, so let's play that one again. spins and stops. Right, this is the end of part one. Please subscribe and check out part two later on when it comes out. Speak to you guys in a bit.